So I will start by actually one simple uh, word in my uh, title, which is IoT. So what's the IoT? Of course, like I know everyone knows, but it's it's that simple. It's just like thing and internet. And when we think about things, those are like physical objects, like sensors, devices, or software, human. Those are connected uh, to the internet uh, by, by means of communication networks, wireless uh, or so. And the purpose of this is to share data, process data, and manage data uh, on a large scale. So it's like a, a, a big connection of everything that's connected to internet, human things, devices, sensors, and so on. So when we need to do like research in the Internet of Things, we, we are faced by many challenges. So uh, the first challenge is when we look at the IoT domain, we can see a vertical fragmentation. That means like we have so many different applications and each vendor or each application has its own requirements, has its own way of handling the applications. So, so that makes it like a wide range of applications. So no one standard application that can fit everything. One other challenge in, in the IoT is the power management. So we, mostly the devices connected to the IoT are limited in resources. So they are battery operated. They have very limited power. They cannot run the usual applications that run on like power de devices like a computer. So that's another challenge. One more thing is the complexity of uh, uh, the IoT, that's because, because of scalability and heterogeneity. We have a huge number of devices and those devices are different from each other. So that increases the complexity of doing research in the IoT. Finally, security is an issue in IoT because there are so many different types of cyber attacks and these cyber attacks can target different parts of our systems. So there is no one global security a mechanism that can secure everything in our OT. But actually, like, I'm not going to consider all of these challenges. I'm mainly focusing on the first one, which is the vertical fragmentation. So what's actually like more details on vertical fragmentation? So that means that the IoT consists of so many vertical domains. So for example, we have eHealth, it's a domain that's very different from smart metering application, which is again different from a smart grid, Again, different from a smart parking system, which has smart vehicles, a smart transportation system, and eventually a smart city. So each of these domains has its own requirements, its own way of connecting devices, and so on. But let's stop here on the word vertical. What actually people mean when they consider the word vertical? If we look at a vertical or uh, the way uh, these domains handle the applications, we can see like each application goes like deep inside uh, the requirements for this application. They have existing information communication technology. They utilize it in a, a way different from other applications to connect their own devices and they create applications very specific for this domain or this application. So that makes it vertical. You go deep, like if you consider the letter T in English, you will have a vertical line and a horizontal line. Horizontal line goes deep into the thing. So you do everything on this. So one approach to um, handle this challenge is to change from the vertical perspective to a horizontal perspective. And we can do this by considering these uh, different ways of the devices are being handled through communication or connection and con uh, convert this into a vertical, and sorry, into a horizontal domain. So the way that horizontal domain or horizontal platform works, again, we still have the same application, but now we don't care about developing specific communication uh, technology for this application, or we have a special dedicated devices for th this communication. Instead, a horizontal platform is a way that com connects between the application end and the end devices, and it handles all this communication and interoperability issues among these devices. So considering this perspective, horizontal platform, recently like there has been many standard uh, horizontal IP let, uh, IoT platforms. So one of the most common uh, horizontal IoT platforms, it's called 
uh, M to M standard. And one M, uh, one uh, M to M standard is a standard for machine to machine communication and IoT. The basic idea behind it is it provides a common service layer, which is mainly a software layer that can connect devices to the applications. So it allows actually to uh, connect applications from different industry or from different domains. That's why we consider it a horizontal. So it works with so many different applications. So it can work with smart grid, it can work with, it can work with smart metering application and so on. A bit uh, more look at the common service layer of the one on to m So it looks like this. We have end devices here. Those are connected through a network like IP network. They have IPs connected through a network. They can have, they, are, they, may, they might be connected to more than one network like this communication network to one even connected to a gateway. But instead of directly connected to the applications, what one M2M do is it adds this common service layer in between the network devices uh, side and the application side. So right, like here at this application, they don't care how they receive the information from the end devices. They don't care how the communication happens or occurs within these devices. All they want is like they have data uh, received from this application. So that facilitates many features and make it easy to uh, use the same platform within different uh, domains. Uh, so looking more onto the common service layer of the one on to m we can see this architecture from one on to m so in this architecture it says that like one m to m can be run on a device on a gateway which is a router for example on a server which is an infrastructure node and in each of these devices we the the way one m to m works it defines an application entity so everything is now is being converted to an application and it provides these common services entities. It's going to be run on each different device. And the way they com communicate or connect these devices, they, they only consider this, they, their underlying network by their IBs. So if we have many devices connected to the, a network, they have IBs. So we just need to network service entity. We just need to have the IP of this, the socket or port it uses on the computer. And we can do all these uh communications if you look here also you will find these uh, communications uh, market in red arrows and those are actually we don't see them from our end side like if a user wants to use uh, one mtm they don't actually see this like this all happens seamlessly between the devices so mca for example refers to the communication point module between common service entity and application entity mcn is a communication module between common service entity and the network service entity and so on. So all this can happen uh, uh, within one AMTM. But actually like looking at a, an actual example, if we have a bunch of sensors that are connected to a router and this router is connected to a server, how can one m to m fits over this layout or, or over this architecture? The way it happens is like these uh, lying red connectors represents a physical connector, which is like wireless or wired connection between those. So uh, on top of this, we will have this architecture. We will have a, a bunch of application layers defined for each of these sensors. Each of the router and uh, server will be assigned a common service entity, and the router will be considered as a middle node in our system. The server will be considered as an infrastructure node in our service uh, system, and each will have its own application layer. So, and these black uh, connectors represent network connections or um, logical connections through the one OM to M. So we are not adding more cables; like everything uh, can communicate uh, logically through sharing its data. So, as I as I mentioned, one M to M is and as a standard. So it's not an actual implementation that you can use or, ru or run on your machine. So when you say like, I want to use one M2M, so you need to have something implementable on your machine. So that's why there are many uh, one M2M implementations. Most of those are open source actually. Uh, some of the common ones are OM2M, which is hosted by Eclipse. There is OpenMTC that started as a licensed product, but then moved to open source. 
there is Mobius. Actually, I'm not sure about uh, my pronunciation of the word. It's a German word, so pardon my German. Uh, but in our project, in the eHealth project, we are considering here if we re remember the title as at words, a secure uh, eHealth IoT horizontal platform. So we are considering actually a, a, an eHealth project. In this project, actually, the team members have done uh, long surveys on what is the best platform to use. We have decided to use 1M2M, and especially we are using OM2M. Uh, Eclipse implementation for this. So Eclipse uh, OM2M, it's a, a software you can download online, you can build on your computer, and it will generate all these common services entities of uh, the one OM2M platform. More on OM2M, OM2M actually supports multiple data transport protocols, or they call it data binding protocols. So those are like HTTP and MQTT. Those are ways of communication between different devices. So each device, as, as we mentioned, is connected through its own IP. But how can actually we transfer information between different devices? We can use either HTTP or MQTT. And we can do this, especially if we are using HTTP through what's called RESTful APIs. And the RESTful API actually is, first API is the acronym for Application Programming Interface. It's just like a small program, but RESTful API uh, refers to the status of getting information from a server, for example, without having to like load the whole web page or a whole, a, a, a whole web page. For example, if you are connecting through your uh, internet browser to some website, and you first go to this website, but then after a while, you need to click something on the website, and this button will reload only part of the web page, not the whole web page. So the title of the, your web page will not change, but new information will be generated. That's actually happened through RESTful API. So RESTful API is a compact way of connecting to server that only considers the information, not considering a whole HTTP or HTML web page. Back to OM2M. So we, we mentioned in the one M to M standards that we have multiple uh, common service entity, and in OM to M, they added a database to each of these common service entities. So each common service entity, like a gateway or an infrastructure node, has its own database, and in this in this database, it it stores information about the devices that are connected to it and their data. If they are sharing data, it's also again stored in this uh, database. Finally, 1M2M cons uh, uh, considers a resource tree that's a hierarchical architecture of viewing the connected devices, and we will see more on this later. But before looking at this, I just want to mention uh, that uh, what OM2M is built actually, like this is a building blocks of OM2M, it shows the different communication binding, HTTP, CoAB, or MQTT, different content format. We can share content in XML or JSON. But most importantly, how it's actually built. So it's built like when you have a, an operating system, it's built over Java virtual machine. And more specifically, using OSGI framework. Actually, I'm not familiar with OSGI framework, but the advantage of building an application over Java Virtual Machine and OSGI, it makes it almost universal. It works on so many operating systems and so many platforms seamlessly without needing to uh, compile it onto this uh, uh, machine differently. So you need to compile it, but because it uses Java Virtual Machine, it's easy. It's a standard way. It will be done the same way on every single operating system. So for example, we were able to run this on Linux, uh, Windows, Mac operating system and even on a Raspberry Pi. So that's an advantage for you. So back to uh, the way OM2M connects devices to each other. So let's consider this example. And this is actually from the uh, official OM2M uh, presentations. So if we, if we have a smart meter that needs to be connected to a gateway and the gateway is connected to a server, and eventually we have an end user who wants to check on the status or the information from the smart, the smart meter. So how OM2M will handle all these communications? So first of all, as we mentioned, get, the gateway is considered as a middle node and the server is considered as an infrastructure node. So when we first run the script to run 
the server or the gateway. That's what we have. We will have. We will have a resource tree generated at each side of those. This server has a resource tree that, that only shows it on the top. Its name on the top. Um, infrastructure node, the common service entry server, and the gateway. We I called it here. It's gateway one or MNCSE one. We can of course like use any names, but this how it looks at on the resource tree. So the first step on uh, performing all this communication is we need the gateway to be registered with the server. And actually we do this using the configuration files of the gateway. So in the gateway configuration file, it's just a, like a text file .ini. We, we can change the, the parameters of this configuration file. So we just specify that, okay, our server that we are connecting to is the IP of the server and we specify the port we are using to connect this. Once we do this and we run the or, uh, start the gateway uh, common service entity, it will be registered to the server side. And in this case, each of the device will each, each device will be added to the resource tree of the other device. But in this case, we usually find the middle node added on top of the infrastructure node. But here, the infrastructure node is added at the bottom of the gateway, and that's only because other applications will be added here. And this will be mostly as a shortcut you can return to the infrastructure node when you want. But it's it's not actually like inside because like if we look from a broader view, infrastructure node is a big entity and the gateway is connected to it. But it's added here so we know which infrastructure uh, we are connected to. Then we have a smart meter. So how can the smart meter be registered or connected to the system? It happens through connecting to the gateway. So in fact, OM2M and 1OM2M devices are not connected directly, or in most cases, they are not direct connected directly to the server. And instead, they are connected to the gateway. So when you need to register a device, it, an application entity will be created in the resource tree for this specific device. We will need to, con to create two containers. One is called descriptor, one is called data. In the descriptor, it has a, de a descriptor instance here showing how the what are the features of this device, what the, does this device do. It's just like a description of what the function of this device, but we can format it into a table. So, so we say like we have uh, the device uh, handling these measurements, but just as a description. After this, when a device have a measurement that needs to be shared with the gateway, it sends its new value to the gateway and now a data instance is created or generated on the data gateway resource tree. So one thing here actually, I, and I will show later in details, how actually these data are sent. How can we send new data or new value or how we do device registration and degenerate or create all these uh, descriptors? This done through RESTful APIs. And uh, specifically we are using HTTP and I'm going to show screenshots of this just after this slide. So. That's how the data instance is created for uh, this measurement. But now consider a device that needs to be registered to the server to check on the information of the smart meter. So the first step is we have an end user using like a phone application. We can generate, we can uh, develop uh, Android or iOS applications, for example, uh, and these will be registered to the server. In this case, just a user entity, an application entity for the user is created in the resource tree of the server. But how can the registration to the end device is handled? So it's handled through subscription. And subscription, again, is an HTTP request, a specific request that specifies which device I need to subscribe to. And the server handles this part, it redirects the subscription request to the gateway, which generates or creates this user subscription entity under the container data. So after this, if a device has a new data to generate, it sends again using HTTP, a new data instance is created. But now, because we have a user subscription, this new data will trigger uh, an alarm to the user subscription to share this information to the server and from the server eventually to the end device. So after this step, this will be the final view of our resource trees from the infrastructure node and the middle infrastructure node. So as I mentioned, we do all this through uh, 
HTTP requests. And the way we can do this, we have two ways to do this actually. So first we can use an HTTP client. For example, like I use here a Postman application. So Postman is very simple. You have a table, you just enter the parameters you need to do for HTTP. And these parameters, for example, looks like this. If uh, we want to connect to a server or a, a middle node, we just put the address of this device here and which part of the resource tree we are targeting. And get just gives the status. We are checking the status of uh, some uh, some entity. So here we are checking the status of the middle node, so it's active or not, or it's uh, alive or not. And in, in each request in HTTP in Postman, we can do this. We have to include the authorization, which is username and password. And uh, by default here, they are admin and admin. So this is one way, uh, the first way to communicate between different devices is to check on a communication of device. But as I mentioned, like this can be done through Postman. It can also be done through the devices itself. Like for, sort of, for example, we have done the, exactly the same thing on a Raspberry Pi through uh, Python scripts. So you write a Python script, there is a package in Python called requests. So you, you import this uh, package or module, it's called requests. And then you can send requests uh, very easy through functions. So you can say, for example, request.get or request.post. Uh, to handle these uh, HTTP requests from a Raspberry Pi or uh, a device that cannot run uh, a powerful HTTP client like Postman. So other uh, ways to uh, do this communication. So for example, how to create an application entity for a smart device. So again, we this time we use uh, post instead of get. So we are posting an HTTP request instead of getting this. Again, we need to authorize and we need to, uh, to specify the type here. Type two is uh, responsible for creating new application entity. And here we bought the details for this uh, device. Uh, most importantly, we uh, bought the, the type of the device here and we bought the name of uh, the, this application entity. After we run this uh, HTTP request, if we look at the uh, resource tree on the website of uh, uh, OM2M, we will find my sensor as an application has been created. So I'm going, uh, I'm going to go fast through the coming slides. Uh, so to create a descriptor, you use type three and you specify it's a descriptor and the descriptor will be created and it's a post again to create a data instance, which is under the descriptor, which actually specifies or explains what a device do. You need to use type four here and you need to put this information. So for example, here we put uh, these values for uh, the description of the device. So what actually this device do uh, value, it's uh, my sensor, it's a sensor and uh, so on. Uh, so similarly for data containers, we again use type three to, can, to create a container and it's uh, connected to my sensor and uh, its name is data. So it will be generated here. And uh, next, we, if we want to post a data uh, instance, we use type four, we put the values here. So for example, like value 27 here was sent and it was a temperature in Celsius. So we specify all this in uh, the data instance and it will be stored on the server side under this data instance. Uh, and finally on this, if we want to subscribe to a device, we use type 23 or 23 and we specify which device we need to uh, subscribe to and uh, an entity will be generated under or created under, under the resource tree. So till now we have explained how to use OM to M and to use one OM to M. So what actually we are doing in our project as, as eHealth? Of course, we are going to build over all this. So uh, we we were able to do all these steps uh, on our end side. So we know how to create data. We how to share data between devices. But back to our title, we have the word secure. So now, right now we can have a, a, a an eHealth IoT horizontal platform we connect medical devices uh, like any other device here like my sensor but what is the security part we are talking about so in in this regard we have proposed to uh, define to uh, generate or create or develop uh, a, a complete platform that can handle both 
uh, infrastructure for e-health, uh, logistics and development. So we have we create security, we handle uh, connecting different medical devices and so on. And the architecture for our platform looks like this. So what we are proposing to uh, have in our system, we are proposing to have two type of uh, entities that are connecting to uh, our system. We can have users, these users, for example, we can have like in a health system, we can have a nurse, a doctor, a patient or a visitor to, the, to a hospital. We can have nodes which are like wearable sensors. We can have actual sensor, thermometer sensor, pulse uh, sensor. We can ha have RFIDs connected to the patient's information, needs uh, or uh, surgery uh, tools. We can have also monitor devices like ECG uh, in a patient room. Many type of devices can be connected to our system. So our system needs first to handle all these types of communication uh, from node side and from user sites. And we have we are building our system over OM2M horizontal platform. So before getting into security management layer or security modules, we found that we also need to do some tasks related to OM2M. And those tasks are mainly handled by OM2M, but we might need to do them differently. So for example, like I, I, I separated this by two dashed boxes, the, the, the lower one and the upper one. In the lower one, again, we are using OM2M, but we are going to create plugins. And these plugins will modify slightly the way OM2M handles uh, some things. So for example, like we know is from AMTM, it can register the devices. But if we look at these registrations, like from the previous figure example, we can see like those are generated, for example, like uh, data entries or so, we have very generic names. So one way we can do this is we can have uh, uh, a systematic way of generating data, of registering users. We can have specific IDs assigned to those users so that each user from its ID, we can get some information about this, not just using a generic uh, ID. We can also have a secured registration from the previous slides. We can also see like usually in every single HTTP request, we use the same username and password, admin and admin. Of course, it's not secure. So we need to change this like in the configuration files for each device we, we deal with. So to achieve this user authorization in a secured way, secured registering is we limit the registration to uh, uh, secured entities or uh, we uh, limit the access of uh, malicious entities to our system or to be registered in our system. So all this is, 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 is seen as a modification of the service layer that's provided by OM2M. Again, over this, we are still uh, implementing security features. So for example, we are implementing access control, we are implementing trust management, and more, we propose to implement optimized security profiles. So based because we are working on an environment with the heterogeneous devices, these devices are different in their capabilities. So they might or might not be able to, uh, for example, run the encryption techniques we provide. So we, if we, assume or if we propose to use a specific encryption technique in our system, some devices, especially those like small devices, might not be able to use this. So we need to find an alternative way to do this. And the way we propose to handle this is to have security profiles and each device based on its category or its uh, capabilities can be assigned one of those security profiles. So after this, we consider the security management layer. So we, when we considering this, of course, like we we know that like there are so many threats. So in our model, we have a, a, a threat model, and security management layer receives the information about possible threats from this security model, and it receives also a list of required countermeasures. It maps these countermeasures to suitable actions. So plus handling trust, plus having security profiles, plus having access control. Again, it applies end-to-end -end security policies based on the threat model we have. And this threat model is actually is an integral part of our project. And in this threat model, we have a number of use cases. We identify the possible threats based on these use cases. These threats will be prioritized and uh, their risk will be evaluated based on some risk metrics. And uh, finally, they will be categorized based on uh, their type. And when we are considering this type of threats, 
we the way we are handling this, we have a type of attack categories, spoofing, timbering, reproduction, information disclosure, and so on. And we have a, some security properties that are general security properties that needs to be implemented in any system or especially in our system. Authentication, integrity, integrity, non-repudiation, confidentiality, availability, and authorization. So having all this, we will also like impart, uh, beside the implementation the one of the goals of this project is to have a complete uh, evaluation of the threats that face our system how our system handles or uh, with, uh, uh, overcomes these security threats how can it handle security features and we can have a numeric uh, evaluation for uh, all these aspects so finally when we are considering the implementation of uh, the uh, security management layer, we can see it like as again a software layer that will handle multiple cases. So, for example, like we will have an, a module for access control, and this access control can have can ha ha has an input. It it it, it uh, a requ request ID, device ID, device attributes, and so on. The way I model this here, these are called UML. Unified uh, modeling language. It's just, it's a way in programming to model the classes, but just by their outline. So each upper block represents the class name, and here represents the attributes, which is the are the variables within this class. And finally, this part represents the functions inside each of these. So again, this is just an initial way of uh, thinking about uh, security management here. We, we can still extend those, add more classes or add more attributes or functions based on the way we will be implement those in our system. So uh, finally, I'm uh, concluding my presentation with the concluding remarks. In this presentation, we have discussed the IoT and IoT horizontal platforms in general, the difference between horizontal and vertical platforms. We focused on one M2M standard, what's its common service layer, what it does, uh, its different entities, application entity, common service entity, network service entity, and we showed an example of uh, map to actual server and gateway. We then talked about OM2M, uh, as a specific implementation of one OM2M standard, we saw its building blocks. We saw a concrete example about its resource tree example and how those are generated. We also considered these uh, through HTTP requests and we saw how can those be done. Uh, finally, we talked about our secure eHealth I platform. We mentioned, we talked about threat model. How are we evaluating the threats in our uh, model and uh, how we propose to uh, model the security management layer, both in terms of functions and in terms of uh, actual implementations. Uh, by the end of this presentation, I want to thank everyone in our eHealth uh, project team, starting from Professor Ibn Kahla, Ali, Anastasia, Mohanad, uh, Dr. Ashraf Masrawi, Rami, Dr. Jir, Joe, and Alfie. 